we took a little break, but the uh, KDLT Sports video blog is back for what's going to be a very big week of local sports. He's Mark Ovenden of Calling All Sports and the KDLT Sports Director. I'm the weekend sports anchor, Zach Borg. Uh, a lot going on this week. A lot happened last week. Uh, let's start by looking ahead to this week. Um, a lot of football, a lot of state sports for uh, high school going on right now, but one of the big events we've been looking forward to for a while now is the Premier Center. We're going to see its first sporting event, uh, the Stampede coming home for their home opener on Saturday night. The team's 1-1-1, one, one, and one. so they're off to a decent start, but the real story, this is the opening of the new building. Uh, you've been in there a few times. Uh, how much you are we – I'm looking forward to getting in there for seeing a sporting event. I know it's had the concerts, but – uh, this is something people have been looking forward to for a long time, and it's finally here. I would have loved to have gone to Jason Aldean, but we had a football Friday last Friday, so that kind of took priority. But, yes, they play on Saturday, uh, the, the first first uh, sporting event, as you said, in the um, event center. And I, I'm excited about it. It's, uh, it's going to have – if you've been to a modern hockey arena, you know that no matter where you sit, you have a good view of almost the entire sheet of the ice. And at the arena, you just didn't. Um, you could even have a good seat and you couldn't see down in one corner or you couldn't see down in that corner or probably couldn't see in either one. Um, that, that's going to be the biggest difference. Plus, everything's new. Everything's spanking, brand spanking new and clean and exciting. There'll be big video boards yep. and uh, the chances to see replays, and that's something we never had at the arena. And So, uh, yeah, I'm excited to go out to the game on Saturday night just as a fan and, and watch and that's followed up by uh, er, earlier in the day by Augie and USF playing football for the third straight year. That's going to be exciting, too. The interesting thing, too, the wrap-up on the Premier Center is the Stampede actually led the league in attendance last year at the old arena. Uh, and, of course, basketball is going to start getting a foothold here in a few few weeks. We'll see the Summit League tournament. We might even see an NCAA tournament here in a couple of years. What do you think the atmosphere is going to be like? This is a 12,000-seat arena where they're expecting between ten to 12,000, I think, for this first Stampede game. But do we think it's still going to have the same – do we think it will be an intimate venue like the old arena was, or, or is that just an unknown right now? I think it's an unknown. I think, it, I think it's going to be – their goal is to have it sold out for Saturday night. Obviously, if you get 12,000 people in there, it's, it's going to be very intimate. The crowd will play a factor in it. Uh, for most of their home games, they're going to curtain off the upper portion. And I think if in the bowl, you're talking about 6,000, something along that line. Um, I'm not sure if they'll draw 6,000 per game, but, you know, just like the target target field when it first opened, uh, that was the toughest seat to get in Minneapolis. And it wasn't necessarily because the Twins were playing all that great. A lot of people just wanted to come and see what it was like and weren't disappointed either. So I think the same thing will probably happen with the uh, Denny Sanford Premier Center. Well, that game uh, with the Stampede, again, that starts at 7 o'clock, the first Premier Center game. Going to be a very busy Saturday, headlined football-wise by Augustan and Sioux Falls. Now, Augie took a little luster off the game last week. They lost 31-25 to at Upper Iowa. Otherwise, they'd be 4-1 and coming into this. But Sioux Falls is unbeaten, 5-0. and They've never – they haven't lost to Augie since, this, since they joined the NSIC. But these are probably by far the, the best these two teams have been since they've been together in this league. Uh, do you sense it's a rivalry, or is this, or do we need more games like this with big implications? Because this this could be a, for a playoff bid for one of these two teams. Oh, I don't think there's any question it's a rivalry. I I had three sons that played college football, two of which played at Augustana and one played at USF before he ended up at Dakota Wesleyan, and and I know. For years and years and years, when you weren't here, there was so much talk between the two schools. Ah, we'd kick your butt. You know, USF would say that, and Augie would go, ah, you're just NEIA. Well, there was a lot of that back and forth, a lot of it back and forth. I don't think we're ever going to see the kind of excitement for a game as we had for the first one because that was a way to settle it on yeah. the field. And it was a, it was a crazy game. Uh, Double overtime. It, it was the best environment for a football game I've ever been at in my 36 years covering games in Sioux Falls. It was a tremendous environment. Not sure it's ever going to quite be like that again, unless there's big implications, which, like you said, it, had Augie won that game at Upper Iowa, it would have made it even more anticipation oh, yeah. for the game. But it's still 5-0 and 3-2. Oh, and and Augie's still 
you know, they, they, they lost to Duluth, barely, uh, which would have been their only loss. So, and, and a lot of things didn't go their way against Upper Iowa. Chase Marceau was um, summoned to quarterback right at the last minute. It was a game-time decision, and uh, he had some unlucky breaks. They had seven turnovers and still almost won the game. So, and Upper uh, Iowa is 5-0. and oh, too, Right, so. right. So, I mean, I fully, intend, I fully anticipate that this will be a – this will be a good atmosphere, and it could be a great game. Question, who is this more important to right now? Obviously, USF is 5-0. and so th- but, but, for Aug- but for Augie, can you – I mean, they have not beaten USF. Yeah. Is, is, that a, is that kind of an important thing for their program? To at least, Like you said, all those years they said they were going to kick USF's butt. It hasn't happened. Well, they said that to each other. Yeah. There wasn't one I – think, I think that was a back-and-forth <laughs> thing. It was like, gosh, I just wish – could you guys just play it on the field and prove it there? And, and they finally had a chance to do that. Yeah, a win would be important for Augie in recruiting and everything else, but um, USF is having the it's, season. Yeah, right there's. Now, yeah. I think there's a little more at stake for USF because, in this I mean, game. That was a, they were a nine-win team a few years ago, and they still didn't make the playoffs. They, they may have to win ten games to get into the playoffs right. this year. Uh, that game's at one o'clock. This is at, since the first. This is the first game. At, it's at Kirkaby Over, which is where the first meeting was. It's the first time they've been back there since that game for USF. Obviously, USF won at Bob Young a year ago. Also on Saturday, uh, State and U are at home. Got to plug our stations here. Uh, U is at home against U and I. That'll be on one of our channels, Cozy TV. It's the first of our four KDLT games of the week uh, coming up in October. State is at home against Missouri State. Uh, they both got smacked last week. There's really no nice way to put it. Obviously, a little more surprising, I think, for SDSU because uh, they were never even competitive in that game. It was 21 to nothing before you could blink, and they'd turn it over three times. Yeah. The big news for you and I, or for USD, is that they get Kevin Earl back this week. He is going to start against you and I. A quick recovery from that broken finger. Um, what do we expect? I mean. It, Every game now gets that much more important after uh, those kind of blowouts now that they're in conference play. Yeah, I mean, you just look at the NFL. We've seen so many teams rebound from getting blown out like my Patriots. Um, I wasn't sure they were ever going to win another game after how badly they played against your Chiefs, and yet they turn around and beat. Thanks for that, by the way. Yeah, they turn around and beat the best team in the AFC on Sunday night. So I, I guess it's not the blowout part that should be as concerning as – some of the mistakes and things that were made, because yeah. those those have to be rectified for these teams to get back to where they need to be. And State, I think, felt like they had the type of team that could maybe win. The Valley. Yeah, yeah for sure, and, and go far in the playoffs. So it's not that that can't happen, but they cannot have another game like that. I mean, you turn over the football three times anywhere, even yeah. at home, you're, you're probably going to get buried, and they were buried after, in that game. Obviously, it's good to be at home, and this league is kind of crazy right now. I mean, Indiana State actually beat you and I at home. Indiana State was picked last, I think, in the league. So top to bottom, it's a tough league. You're going to get beat up. Nobody's, we don't think, going to go undefeated in this league and win it, even if it's NDSU. So. You know, it's it's even better than it's been in terms of, I don't want to say parity, just the number of good teams. Indiana State's a good example of that. You know, they've been not very good in the past, and all of a sudden they're good. So... Yeah, you can't look past anybody. As both USD and South Dakota State found out last week, and combined, I think the combined score of the two games was 86 to 20 that those two teams lost. And they were never really that competitive. USD was at tied at half, and then they got blown away in the second half. Obviously, we also have high school football this week. It's a big championship time right now as state tournaments are just getting underway. State softball, we had uh, Roosevelt and West Central win. Softball titles over the past weekend. West Central, that was their third straight title. And, and Yeah, West Central's won three straight. I think this Rose, we had John Seitz on Calling All Sports on Tuesday, and, and um, I think John, who is the head coach of Roosevelt, feels like he might have a team that could win several in a row, too. Uh, you know, their pitcher's only a sophomore. Yeah, Alexis Colts, and she's committed to Baylor. Yeah, so, but not just because of her. They've, they've got a lot of good players and a lot of good young players that haven't even played for the varsity yet. Um, softball's really, really, you start looking at some of the players that have gone on to play uh, at a higher level, and, and the softball in this area has gotten a lot better. And, and this year, Watertown, uh, Washington, and Roosevelt, you any one of those teams, yeah. Rap City Stevens, could have won the state title. 
Also, uh, state golf just wrapping up uh, yesterday. Brandon Valley takes the team title, and they had one of their golfers. It's one of the best shots we've seen at a state tournament. Well, uh, Alex Hammer dropped one from the bunker. When you hole out from the bunker for Eagle, that's the kind of thing. You'd, I'd be doing the birdie dance if I'd have done that. And he did it in the state tournament on a hole where if that ball had gone a foot past the hole, it would have rolled down. He probably would have bogeyed the hole. He ends up making an eagle, wins by one shot, um, with Riley Duncanson, his teammate, tying for second place, one shot behind. And uh, Brandon Valley wins its first ever state title. So congrats to the Lynx for what they did on the Lynx as they win by 10 shots over Lincoln. Uh, a lot of Lynx stuff there. Lincoln, Very punny. Lynx, Lynx. Uh, but, yeah, they played great for two straight days up in Watertown. And not to be outdone, the Couriers of Del Rapids, led by Adam Karst, who was tied for the lead after day one, just blew the field away in the second round with a 73 and won by seven shots. And the Couriers won by 38. So, uh, they were dominant all year. They that, were. That, that was pretty much yeah, wire to wire. expected them to win, but they won by a lot. Well, we've also got state soccer championships coming up this weekend out in Mitchell. Uh, both Lincoln teams are in that one. We've got uh, Lincoln Roosevelt in the boys' final, Lincoln O'Gorman in the girls' final. Uh, those are double A. First year, those have actually been sanctioned. Those used to be just kind of the club tournament. Now they're all uh, matched together. Sioux Falls Christian boys are going up against Groton. Good to see kind of the double A now sanctioned as well. Or the double A now sanctioned as well. Now there's all one combined tournament. Yeah, and and kind of like how they've done it, where it's separated on different weekends yeah. and it's on home fields and it ends up in one place but um there's some good soccer to be played yet before the season is over and state tennis um for the girls is also thursday friday and saturday so a lot going on this is a busy time of the year it's already state tournament time and we're what three weeks now at three weeks from now i think is the playoffs for football i mean yeah. we're, we're down to the last two three weeks of the regular yeah, season you got state cross country coming up too yeah. and the lincoln boys last week were ranked 19th in the country 19th in the country for eric pooley that's pretty incredible uh, that they've reached but will lauer um and actually he's not the only guy on that team that can run fast but will's uh, had i think they won like the aim the re like the uh, <laughs> A national tournament down in Ames, like an Ames regional. So they've been like to go along with that nineteenth overall ranking. They've been they they're clearly the favorites. I think going into the cross, state cross well, country, they are defending champs. Yes, and they've got a lot of depth, and that's what wins you in cross country. And yeah, the boys were first in that uh, uh, tournament down in Ames, and I think the girls were second. And they did really well in a tournament, and also in or in a meet that was held down in Nebraska the previous weekend. So, yeah, they've they've got it going. Well, we had a lot to go in here, a lot to cover this weekend, and we still got a lot even after this weekend. It's going to be a big one. Uh, stay tuned to KDLT all the week long. We'll have plenty of highlights. Football Friday, of course, just a couple days away. And, again, you can watch that USD-UNI game. That's the homecoming game for South Dakota, actually. That's going to be on Cozy TV again. That's Saturday at 3 o'clock. But, for Mark Oven and I'm Zach Borg. This has been the KDLT Sports Extra Points video blog. See ya.